he had no idea, no clue when they were promoting it. And boom, it, it, the sales would be there. It was crazy. But uh, that's the type of effect you can have. Now, the Hey everyone, this is Norm Ferrar, aka The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. Today, we're going to be discussing all sorts of things, but we'll pr primarily be talking about selling on Amazon FBA 2023. We're going to be talking about newsletters and some AI. So welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. What do I love about going live with a podcast? Well, it's definitely not the tech issues that happen. And right now, my, com my computer's blinking. I, I have a black screen half the time. I don't know what's going on. Kelsey had some problems, but we are here. Man, if this would have happened episode one, I would have been in the fetal position. Now it's only half fetal position. But today, we, are, we have a guest. He's our most popular guest or the most, the guest that has been on the show the most times. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. He has, now let me see if I get this correct because it constantly changes. Uh, he is a part of Helium 10. Uh, and by the way, in case you didn't know this, I, I, I keep forgetting about this, but uh, I joined Helium 10 way, way, way back. And I joined Kevin's group. It was with Manny Coates and Guy uh, and Kevin. And it was called the Illuminati uh, until they had some problems with the name Illuminati. So they changed it to Helium 10 Elite Mastermind. So that's what Kevin takes care of. He also has an incredible co course called the Freedom Ticket. He also uh, helps mentor and collaborate with, I don't know, thousands and thousands of different Amazon uh, users. And I don't know how many sales he'll probably be able to tell us uh, in revenue. I don't know, hundreds of million, uh, millions of people, maybe billions of dollars in sales. He also organizes the Billion Dollar Seller Summit. As you can tell, uh, I get I get revved up when I get to talk to Kevin because he's always got some new and great information. Okay, but before we get to uh, Kevin, let's have a talk or a word from our sponsor. This episode of Lunch with Norm is sponsored by VAA Philippines. Looking for a high quality virtual assistant for your business? With the rigorous screening, intensive Amazon and Walmart training, and ongoing professional development, get the peace of mind with skill and motivated virtual assistants for a long-term working relationship. Hire through VAA today. And now let's get back to the show. Let's talk to Kevin King if he has his cup. Oh, I don't. I have. Oh, you. Uh, I can't even drink Coke Zero right now. I can't drink. I, I, how? You know, this is torture. You, 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 all people will understand this. I had a tooth pulled yesterday. Oh, Pepsi. What the heck is this Pepsi crap? No Coke Zero. No. But well, I can't even drink soda because I had a tooth pull and the doctor, I get out of the chair and they're like, for the next two weeks, uh, no carbonated beverages. I was like, you're kidding, right? And they're like, no, no carbonated <laughs> beverages, no soda because the acid. Oh. And, you know, my dentist is always telling me the same thing uh, when I go in to have my teeth cleaned. Like, you need to quit drinking soda. I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I'm not going to do it. I actually tell him, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do it. You can just fix it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So uh, I'm being good for at least a couple days while because it's a hole in my mouth uh, because I got to put an implant in uh, in three months. Uh, so I'm like, all right. So it's like, all right, how am I going to survive this? I'm like, that's oh no. Oh, and they no. said no smoking, so I can't for two weeks. So I can't have cigar, which means like in San Diego, I can't have a cigar. I'm like, that rule's thrown out. Uh, <laughs> I'm ignoring that one too. Did you see the post I did of uh, my dad and I? Yeah, that was cool. That was really cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your, dad, we... your dad looks young, younger than you. Uh, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's my lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, yeah, that was an awesome visit, and uh, we we had a few cigars. Yeah, it was yeah, great. that it was, was cool. Was... That was cool. And you told me about the little book he wrote. Uh, and the... Yeah, that that's uh, that's awesome too. So, in, in case you don't know, like uh, my dad's an entrepreneur, 
And he's been like, like that. a serious entrepreneur for those of you who don't know. And not just an entrepreneur, but like a he's like a, Norm got his entrepreneurial blood from his dad. Yeah, he, he yeah, he's he, he is a I yeah, I hate word using the word serial, but you know, he sees something and he goes for it, he goes for it, he goes for it. Uh anyways, it was great because we did talk a lot about that. And uh, he won't go on a podcast, uh, but it would be awesome to have him on. But uh, learned a lot. He wrote a book just for the family, not for anybody else. But, you know, for the family about from starting, uh, going to Barclays Bank uh, back in Montreal and uh, just uh, just starting off as a junior clerk and everything that he did from that point on. And uh, it was amazing. I didn't know half the stuff that he did. So anyway, you told me to do this a while back. And I would suggest anybody that has a, a family, um, like stories of your life, just put it so easy now, especially, um, you know, with chat GPT that can really help it out. Or I think it's called a story.ai. You can pump it in and it'll prompt you for questions and uh, you just answer them and it comes out with a chapter. But uh, yeah, I'm, I told you I'm going to start to do that. Like right after I saw what my dad did, it was great. Yeah, I told you my, my father had done that like three. My father's in his 80s. So like three years ago, went to visit him and he gave me and my brother. Uh, there's just two of us. He gave us this like 25 page printout with a stapled. I'm like, what's this? He's like, oh, it's just some some short stories I wrote. So he sat down at the computer and wrote like one or two paragraphs, just short stories. Like the day I met your mom. And this is what happened. You know, he tells the story of how he took someone else's seat in a movie theater um, and you know, he talks about this, some of his experiences in Vietnam or the day he had to, you know, he loves dogs. And the day when he was 13, he had to go out and shoot his dog in the head and put him down. Uh, you know, just crazy, just all this interesting stuff. It's like, I've reread it like three times. It's fascinating stuff. Um, hmm. But I always say that people, like, and me, you and I always sit around, you know, smoke a cigar at events or at my house or wherever we may be. <clears throat> and there's always just cool. Every time there's some cool new story that comes out of one of our experiences. Um, it's like, man, you just need to document this stuff. It's like crazy stuff. I mean, most people have one or two of these in their lives, not tons like we do. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's why, like last week, you know, you were, you got into the, the dream 100 last week. Oh uh, yes. I got to <laughs> talk about that. So thank you, you so much. Yeah. You're welcome. So that's, that's random. So I, I remember Norm, I told Norm I was doing this. He's like, well, I better not be one of the last ones um, <laughs> like, well, because there's a hundred. So it's going to take two years to announce yeah. this, this whole list almost. I'll be number one oh one. And it's, it's, I have the list I and mean, I have a five spots open in case, you know, I want to add it or change something yeah. and it's random. We draw them out of a hat. So it, they're not in any particular order, but yeah. Norm's, Norm's uh, name got drawn uh, last week. So With he was 20. on there. And then I told people, you know, you got to ask you sometime about your your kidnapping story or uh, oh, yeah. or uh, some of the other, you know, the guy with the slit wrist and and Hawaii or whatever. It's it's just cool stories um, yeah. that that you have that people just have no idea in the hijacked plane and all that stuff. <laughs> oh, I forgot. Yeah, I didn't even mention that one. The guy dying on the plane. Oh, yeah, I, I, did, I, I, I did take a little joke at uh, Kelsey, though. I said, you have uh, three three sons. One's yeah. a doctor, one's a talented musician, one has a wheel named after him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, so, sorry, Kelsey, when you read that, if you got that, you like, thanks, Kevin. Appreciate that. Oh, man. No. I, I had to do it. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, by the way, if you haven't signed up for Kevin's uh, newsletter, it's the best newsletter on the market. I was talking to somebody today at La Vida, and we were talking about newsletters. And she said, yeah, I subscribe to Kevin's newsletter and uh, it's fantastic. It's the best newsletter out there. And I said, really, do you read anybody else's newsletter in the Amazon space? She goes, no. I said, well, other than the Lunch with Norm newsletter. She goes, oh, well, I'll sign up for that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but it is good. It's very informative. Uh, and, you know, it's interesting because I take time and I go through and I learn. I learn a lot of stuff. 
just going through because you you're hit different areas and uh it, it's just very well thought out you you're spending a lot of time on this a little bit i mean it's not too, it's not too bad but i um um it's probably about four four five hours to put each one together right now i'm doing it it's it's not ai written it's me doing and you, it and you can tell um but at some point you know i i won't be able to i'll hire someone to do some of it uh, i'll oversee it but i want to i want to set the tone and we're doing some testing with different things seeing what people like what they don't yeah. like right now but it's more like a magazine than a newsletter so and this is one of the topics i want to talk about today is newsletters why when you first told me about newsletters i thought are you kidding come on kevin there's so many other things out there why newsletters and then you told me, you explained it to me. Why don't you just tell a little bit uh, about the story about why you even thought of going into newsletters? Yeah, so years ago, uh, about 25 years ago, you know Mark that produces the Billion Dollar Seller Summit with yeah. me. Um, he and I, have a, we still have a business together. And we had a business together and we're trying to figure out a way. This is early days of the internet. So it's before social media, before all these other ways to build audiences. And we're like, how can we build an audience? And I'd done some stuff by mail in the past, you know, like a newsletter or a kind of little thing by mail. I was like, why don't we do an online newsletter and build an audience? Uh, people that can, we had a membership based site where people could pay $29.95 a month. And in order to get them to pay that, well, it's like, why don't we create something of value and deliver a bunch of value to them for a while? And then eventually they'll become fans, they'll fall in love with us, and they'll, they'll buy <clears throat> what we're selling. And it also makes it so that. You don't, they don't feel like they're being marketed to. They're, they're getting valuable information and they don't feel marketed to. So if I do plug something in there, hey, we have a calendar coming out or we have this, it, it feels more natural. And so we created a newsletter. <clears throat> this is late 90s, early 2000s. And we were sitting out, to, we got to the point where we're sitting out 250,000 a day, 250,000 people a day. <clears throat> and we, we had it down to, we, we developed our own system to do this. I had two two guys that I paid, uh, I guess today you'd call them VAs that back then they that really didn't exist mm -hmm. that were remote and they would go and they'd scour the internet for stories. The, the news there was about pretty women. So anything, it wasn't some porno thing. Um, I want to clear that up when you say pretty women, that's the first thing that comes to some people's mind. It was about anything from Farrah Fawcett to, uh, you know, the Hawaiian tropic girls to, it could be Hugh Hefner. It could be anything to deal with, uh, you know, the girl on Wheel of Fortune, Vanna White, or whatever, anything to do with, it's kind of like almost celebrity type of thing, but with, uh, with beautiful women. And so we, they would go and find stories. And they would, we had a back-end database, and they would dump in 50 or 60 links. Like, here's a link to this article. because There was no AI. There was no tool that could just scrape this stuff back then automatically like there are, are now. And then I would go through, and I had to do this. We did this seven days a week. And so no matter where I was in the world, I might have been in Costa Rica. I remember I was in Costa Rica one time. There's no internet. Hotels back then didn't have internet. So I was on a satellite phone at $3 a minute. And I had to log in before midnight every night, midnight central time, and choose the five stories out of these 50 that are going to run. And then they would run almost like a drudge report, if you're familiar with that. Yeah. Um, and they would, <clears throat> they would uh, run. Those five stories would be in an email subject, and you click to see the whole story. And then we had gaming. And one of the ironic things was we – uh, we had a game thing where it was like a grow your sword. So we had a, you would answer trivia questions and you'd have a, a there'd be a, like a, a, a knight with a sword because most of our audience was guys. And if you got it right, your sword would grow. If you got it wrong, your sword would shrink. But if you grew your sword all the way out, then you would get free prizes. You might get a free calendar or trading cards or something like that. So that created interactivity. We had a joke of the day. Uh, and I was getting a lot of those jokes uh, from a site called Twisted Humor. Uh, we would, you know, we were just kind of lifting them off of there. Because uh, I, I can't make up jokes. It turns out Twisted Humor was Manny Coates' website. Before, way back in the day, before there was a Helium 10, that was, it was just serendipitous that he and I, uh, we were talking about that one time. I was like, holy cow, that was your website I was lifting stuff off of back then. Um, but um, so we we did that. And we had some other interactivity. And it did really, really well. We would get on, uh, I, I told this story in one of the recent my recent newsletters, uh, Jimmy Bomas, I'm um, Jimmy, uh, we, that started a, Jimmy Wells that started Wikipedia, he used to have a site called BOMIS, B-O-M-I-S. And it was a ring site. So back in the day, before Google, uh, Yahoo was a directory, if you remember. It wasn't a, a search engine. It was a directory. And, you know, you, you type in uh, music and here would be a directory of music with subheadings under it, like an outline almost. 
Well, there's a site called Bomas, and they featured a bunch of pictures of pretty girls, bikini girls wearing shirts or just, you know, stuff you'd see on TikTok or right now, yeah. you know, that that kind of thing, you know, PG, but sexy. Uh, and so the, but there's a ring site. So at the at the bottom, it'd be like next page and previous page buttons. So you'd see something and you're like, whoa, what's the next page? And you just go in this ring, kind of like scrolling on a s- social media. But there's a ring. Uh, it's the same mm-hmm. concept. And they would feature us and we get tons of traffic and they send us their t-shirts and we'd shoot one of our models in their t-shirt and they give us even more traffic. So we got a lot of signups from that. Howard Stern at that time was still on regular radio before he went to satellite and we would send models uh, to New York. We had two models there the day before September 11th happened actually. And they just got out just in time before those planes wow. happened. It was pretty scary, but we would send models up to Howard Stern and they get on there. I went up there a few times and, Every time we would have a, we had a server, uh, two servers at a little place, and we had to have someone go over there um, to restart the server. We get so much traffic whenever he mentioned the website, and it would just crash the server, and we'd have to have someone restart the machine, and we got signups off of that. So it worked really, really well. We did that for like four or five years, and then uh, there was no, this can spam act came out. Yeah. So all of a sudden, we started going into spam folders and promotional folders, and people were complaining that we, I'm not getting the newsletter and it just became a mess. So we actually just kind of backed off of it and uh, went a different way. We had the guys at USA Today contact us, Hallmark contact us, wanted us to do stuff. It, it was, it was big. It was, it was going well. So I just kind of went away from that. And then I went to an AI conference, uh, back, uh, Perry Belcher's AI conference in April of this year. And he was talking about showing all the cool stuff about AI and it was a crash course in AI and all the cool tools. And he said, one of the cool things that you can do with this is newsletters. There's newsletters out there that um, have been built up and sold for millions of dollars. You know, there's one called the Milk Road on crypto. The guy built it for eight or nine months and sold it for eight figures. Uh, there's another one called the Daily Hustle that sold for 27 million. And now they have the podcast, uh, My First Million, if you're familiar with that podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the guys on there did that. And there's another one that sold the, um, the uh, uh, Morning Brew, sold for like $75 million. Another one sold for $525 million. So people are like, holy cow, there's money in this newsletters. And a lot of people are like, you know, I remember my ex-wife at one point said, the email's dead, Kevin. You got to get with the times. You know, the young people don't go on email. They're, they're on social media. And I was like, bullshit. Uh, people still read emails. They get a lot of emails, but if the email is good. They will read it. So I was like, Thinking about what Perry said about using AI to do news, I was like, that's not the way to do it. Um, that's going to be too impersonal. It's going to be too much just like a, a list, a compilation of things. And that's what a lot of people do. And there's no personality to it. And it's the same stuff that you see everywhere else. It's like, but if I take my old principles and apply it to this and use a- AI to maybe either help brainstorm something or to help uh, automate some of the process of pulling in all the data, uh, you know, and assembling all the data, we can do something really, really cool with this. And then I started thinking about it. It's like, you know, most people in this newsletter business are from the publishing world. They know how to sell ads or they know how to write, but they're not product people. What if you combine newsletters with product sellers, with us Amazon and e-commerce sellers? You could blow this up. Everybody's always talking about you need to build an audience uh, to to sell and go create a Facebook group and build an audience and, you know, get a thousand people and then launch your product or or get people on your Twitter feed. And those are all great, and you should definitely use those. But you don't control them. You're at the the. Mer- I can post something on my Facebook, and I'm. I, I, this happens with Billion Dollar Seller Summit. I have a group. You know, it's 500 something people in this group that have been to the events, and I can post something in there, and it'll t- show me 38 people saw this. That doesn't mean they saw it. It means it went through their feed. Yep. And I'm like, and then another time it's 102, and I have no control. You know, you try to do all the games. Don't put a link in the email. I mean, in the message. You know, get people to respond and reply to try to juice the algorithm. Um, and you can get those up a little bit, but it's it, you have no control with the newsletter. You you have the email address. You know if it's being delivered or not. And the chances are someone's at least going to open it. They may not read it, but at least uh, you know if you do it right, you should. You know, in the newsletter industry, a forty percent open rate is considered really good. With billion dollar seller summits, we're approaching sixty percent. Um, which is really high uh, and a really high click through rate. The average news email that you send out promotional wise, you know, you're selling something might be a, if it's a cold list, might be one or 2%. If it's a, a list of your current customers, you might get 15, 20, 25%. You know, sometimes you might spike that up if it's a really good subject line or something, but, and then provide value. So I was like, 
why I want to do this with our physical products where I'll, if we have a dog, pro, I have a dog product that's all made out of sustainable stuff. The dog audience is huge. You know, it's half of the United States and Canada has a dog. So that's too big of a wide audience, but there's dog people that are also in the sustainability. So they will buy products made out of, you know, recycled bottles and stuff. Um, and we have those kind of products in one of my brands. So what if I create a newsletter of dog lovers and it's all dog stuff that are into sustainability. So the newsletter has stuff about dogs and sustainability. It's, you know, dog tricks or dog tips or here's a cute dog or whatever. And we, we do that. And then every once we can test things in there with affiliate links and see, does our audience want a dog? Do they like dog beds or do they want this? And we can see what people click. And then maybe that gives me product ideas. And then when we have our own products, we can launch it to that audience. That's already very familiar with our brand loves getting the newsletter because it provides value and entertainment and, and, and that kind of thing. So that's what, where we're going with it. But I was like, I need to test this first and figure out what are the best tools? What's the best way to do it? How much time does this really take to do this properly? And that's why I said, well, I already have an audience on in Amazon. Let me start there. And so that's what we're doing is we're doing a lot of testing right now and kind of figuring out the systems. But the idea is to, launch this into multiple industries and we're working on something now with uh you know there's 117 different podcasts in this space um and there's a lot of good information that's said in these podcasts and sometimes there's a lot of crap nobody has time to listen to all that stuff so we're working on something where we're going to have a weekend edition that summarizes a bunch of these podcasts um uh, and we're working on a special tool to do that in a really cool way using a combination of ai and humans and so um and then We'll do it for products, like I said. We'll do it for a bunch of industries. And the thing is, though, it's it's a hot topic now. It's the shiny shiny object. If you right. go out there in the internet marketing world, Perry Belcher at the at last week at his AI summit in Orlando talked about. He showed that here's AI. Here's five ways to make money with AI. One almost like print on demand stuff and having it automatically create images and stuff for print on demand. Another one was uh, done for you services. Another one was a uh, uh, some other stuff. One of them was newsletters, one of the five. And he went off to newsletters and talked about it a lot. But it, it's the same thing with newsletters as it is with selling on Amazon. You remember all the gurus in the beginning, not as much now, but in the beginning days where look at this screenshot. Uh, you know, I made a million bucks in a, in a week selling on Amazon. You can too. Those are the outliers. Those are not the normal people. So these guys selling for crazy amounts that I said earlier, those are outliers. You're probably not going to do that. Newsletters are hard work. Um, you can automate part of it with AI and some of the tools are great, but they're freaking hard work. You need to be able to write. You need to be able to curate. You need to be able to assimilate. And a lot of people don't have those skills. Um, so, but right now, a lot of people are seeing dollar signs and they're jumping into it. And so, Kev, do you think that this is going to be back in the ASM days, right? ASM one, two, three, those were the heyday. You think that's going to happen with newsletters? You're yeah, gonna there's going to be some newsletters that make a lot of money. Uh, yeah, but I'm talking about conferences and events yes. and tons of people pay yes. a few thousand bucks to learn a little bit of knowledge. Yes, that's going to happen. I mean, I could teach a course now. I have a 95-page document of all my notes of newsletters. I've researched the heck out of this. I've done like four or five. Even though I knew what to do, I did four or five classes on it. I did a whole bunch of uh, stuff. I have. I could do a whole big newsletter course right now. And at some point, uh, I might. Um on exactly how to do it. And these are the tools. I did a little bit of BDSS, a little bit, you know, there's mm -hmm. been four people told me they've launched off of that. My trainer just launched a news, uh, a newsletter. Uh, you know, I tell him about it. He just launched a newsletter and he's, you know, I'm helping him a little bit, but where, uh, why I think this to answer your question, why this is going to explode is because Perry Belcher said, Hey, we can use AI and we can automate this. He's doing 19 newsletters right now wow. uh, in different industries. And he's automating most of it with AI three, three Filipino VAs and one person in the U S and to be honest, they're not very good newsletters. They're okay. Uh, I've seen some of them. They're, they're just, they're basically drudge reports, just assembling stuff, but that's okay. And that'll last for a while. But I don't think in my, this is my opinion. I could be wrong. I don't think those are going to last very long. People get tired of them. They're gonna, there's no personality. There's no uniqueness to them. They're just the same old thing. And anybody can do that. And they're pulling from the same stuff. And so he come, he has a, software called letterman.ai that's part of that part of his ignites thing that he's selling so he's going to get all these people coming into this trying to do newsletters and he's about to speak at funnel hacking live russell brunson's event next week with seven thousand people there on newsletters talking about the same thing these are seven thousand like serious internet marketers they're all going to jump on it not all but a lot yeah. of them 
Um, and then he's speaking at go, go High Level in Dallas at, in October on the same thing. So you're going to see it explode uh, out there. The opportunities are good, but if you, it, it is a different business model. It is a, but you can make it self-sustainable. I mean, just right now on my newsletter, I have one VA that's helping me do some of the, the you know, grunt work that I, yeah. I don't want to do. I'm paying him $700 a month. But we're making more money than that just off of referring people to other newsletters. There's a whole ecosystem where when someone signs up, you might see, oh, you might also like these newsletters. And if you click on any of those or you say yes, I get a dollar or two dollars for every one of those. Uh, so last month, it was like twenty nine hundred bucks that we made uh, just off of that. That pays the VA salary and, you know, it's a little bit of extra money. It, it's not that doesn't pay for my time, but my time is made. You know, it's a funnel. I mean, it's a, there's a BDSS virtual summit. There's the, the in-person summit. There's some other stuff I'm coming out with. You'll see around the dream 100. Uh, that's, I haven't announced yet. Some other cool stuff that we're doing. Um, that's, that's going to be cool, but you build that audience and people are looking forward to it. Now, if someone doesn't get the newsletter, they're, they're like, where is it? Uh, I, I want it. Uh, um, and that's, that's what you want to create. And that's the hard part. Yeah. And so that's where a lot of people I think are going to fail. So you're going to see a lot of crash and burns and you're going to see some people rise to the top. But I think the biggest opportunity is for us as product sellers, because we know the Amazon space and we know products. And if you can figure out the newsletter space to build audiences there, I think that the mix of those is extremely powerful, extremely powerful for launching products and, and creating raving fans and can increase your multiple. Okay. So it is the bottom of the hour and Kels, can you come on for a sec? Sure we had technical problems at the beginning. Yes, we did. Do we have a giveaway? <laughs> that is uh, up to you two fine gentlemen. Well, I I, I think, because I'm not going to throw Kevin into a corner with this one, but um, how about I give away some of your service? Your uh, social media service. Go for it. All right. So uh, Kelsey will, how about an hour of Kelsey's time? He thought 30 minutes. How about an hour of Kelsey's time? And he'll be talking to you about influencer or uh, the social media side of things. So um, if you're interested in that hashtag wheel of Kelsey tag two people, you get a second entry and I'll throw in a, uh, a press release as well. So that's a uh, couple hundred dollar value. And then Kelsey is priceless. So hashtag wheel of Kelsey tag two people and you'll get a second entry. Kels, can we go to a sponsor? And we'll come right back. This episode of Lunch with Norm is sponsored by SureGo Marketing. Ready to take your brand to the next level on TikTok and Instagram? SureGo Marketing specializes in helping entrepreneurs and coaches build profitable brands on TikTok and Instagram and in less than 90 days. With Shergo Marketing, you could build your brand, create incredible video content, and increase leads without spending a single dime on ad spend. Visit ShergoMarketing.com today and elevate your brand. Now, let's get back to the show. All right. So, Kevin, uh, now let's talk a little bit about AI. So, both, both of us, I've been very interested in AI and AI development and not just simple prompting, you know, but uh, you just went over. I missed it, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, the AI uh, boot camp or what was it called? AI bot, AI bot summit. Yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit about it. What'd you learn? Anything new? Probably lots. Um, there's some. I mean, I learned more at the first one because it was still kind of new to yeah. me at that time. Uh, but yeah, it was it was. It was good. Um, as far as what I learned, I mean, it, there, there's some cool tools that were shared. He did a cool time like he did at the Driven. Yeah. Deal. So there's some pretty cool tools that were shared. There's some cool ways, some print on demand opportunities that I really hadn't thought about. Uh, I don't know if I'll go into them, but they're, they're still nevertheless kind of kind of cool. Um, and yeah, that's in the, in the listening to him talk about newsletters and disagreeing with a few things that he said. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, but no, it, it, overall, it was good as far as it's a rapidly moving uh, time. Uh, there's great opportunity in there. You know, there's a lot of people selling get rich Qu quick courses, but there's some so many incredible stuff that you can do. And I know even in the, I don't know if you, you're in the WhatsApp group, I think for billion dollar seller summit, right? Come uh, on. Uh, there's, but I don't know if you saw it. Uh, I know you're a busy man. I don't know if you have, but yesterday, <laughs> Karen 
posted uh, this really cool video, this cool tool that will basically create a virtual influencers. So you can take, you can go do use mid journey, yeah. create a, create a person. You can use a reference picture. Say, I want someone to look kind of like this. Mid journey will create a unique image. So you're not violating anybody's rights or anything. And then you can take that and put it into uh, discord and some up with some scripts that these guys show you and this other little plugin and you can actually create images in any kind of setting with this person. Uh, this and it looks real. And then, yeah. then you can go into what's it, Google Studio or Google something. I forget the name of it now. Some Google video thing. Actually, make videos with them, where you can actually go and you can find a video. It could be just, it could be you, Norm, just dancing around your office, like uh, I normally and, do. And then you can you replace your face and you replace your outfit, and you, you know you're basically the wireframe. Uh, you know, huh. like they used to do with blue screen, you know, avatar or whatever. They'd have actors with all these buttons all over them, but you become, you don't need the buttons and, and wires all over. You just become the wireframe and then you replace your whole outfit and your whole face with this sexy woman or. So old, are you telling uh, me uh, that uh, one whatever. day and he created us videos and talking about your products and it's pretty freaking cool. So um, one day, one day I might be able to be the poor man's Kevin King. <laughs> Well, you you got to write your stories first. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know that I saw that, and it, that that I didn't get a time to get into it. But I I read the post. There's another one that uh, just came out. Uh, it was called Mixo, mm -hmm. and I thought that. Have you heard of that? I have. Yeah, it's great for just quick landing pages. Yeah, there, there's a there's there's so many tools. There's tens of thousands. A lot of them are garbage. Yeah. Um, but there, there are some actually really cool tools coming out. A lot of these are fly by night tools. There's people trying to get a foothold, but um, there's some really interesting stuff. It's evolving quickly. Um, what you can do, and I'm, you know, I'm concerned about the election in the U.S. What's going to happen with deep fakes and oh. and everything? It's it's going to be it's going to be bad. I don't know how you're going to police some of this. Um, and people can get framed. Uh, you know, and. and I don't know. There's there's a dark side to some of this. I'm not really overly worried about that. Um, yeah. But for the average person on the street that doesn't know anything about AI or how things work, I think you can fool them. Um, you know, people that, you know, if Jay Leno used to go on the street and ask somebody and who's the vice president of the United States and most of the people didn't know. Yeah. Those people are going to get fooled uh, by AI. Uh, and it's it's very easily. Lead, very could, easily. It could lead to some some bad uh, some bad things. Yeah. One of the. Uh... We we had Saj uh, Audubus on the last on Monday, and he was talking about. I, I don't even think he said this. I think we were talking about this afterwards, and he was saying that he's a filmmaker, and what he does now is he'll type his uh, scripts into uh, Kyber, mm -hmm. and he'll make these animated um, videos from it. Have you heard of Kyber? Yeah, I have. Did you see what Melanie from Avast did? Um, from I don't know what tool she used, but she took uh, pictures from Accelerate last week. Yeah, that she took just group shots and pictures around Accelerate, and she put it through some tool that actually turned them into cartoon, an animated cartoon. So it's like cartoon that it, it, it took all the pictures and turned them into cartoons, and then animated them in a sequence set to music. It's really cool. And I think it's on her social media. It's on her link. Maybe it's on her link. Or LinkedIn, maybe. Uh, but Melanie from Avast, check that. Uh, I need to find out what tool that she used for that. But there's, there's so many cool things you can do. I mean, your picture that was in the Billion Dollar Dream 100. Yep. That's AI. Uh, we take a, we take a, a a regular picture of you and then we put a treatment on it using AI. You put um, a run you run it through Leonardo or is that through? No, it's a different software. Um, oh, okay. Um, but it's yes, yeah, I tried a bunch of different ones and we like this one the best. Um, but that that's yeah that's that's what uh, we do with we use it, simple things like that but there's so many uses for it way beyond what people are hyping in our industry of rewrite your titles and um and do your listing stuff there, there's a lot of value i mean amazon right now last week they announced you know they they built in an ai listing yep. builder and most people i have not personally tried it but people that have told me they tried it say it sucks uh, they would never trust that hmm. uh, to write their listing right now it's it's not any good but that'll be that'll get better. Yeah. Um, and part of that's because Amazon doesn't know what you know about your product. They they're just using stuff that's out there. So you you should always be able to do it better. AI is not going to replace a lot of people, 
I've talked to a lot of agency people and saying, what, what do you think? Are you going to go from 80 people staff to three? And most of them aren't worried about it. People like uh, Brandon Young at Data Dive, I saw him at uh, Alibaba conference a couple of weeks ago. I said, what are you doing? You know, if a Amazon makes these switches and the way search works where they're using more AI and they can really keep where they're, what they're saying, according to their scientific papers is that they're, they're going to be able to, you don't need to keyword stuff anymore. You know, the original way you had to put <clears throat> keywords had to match. If you had, I had the word uh, dog bowl, it had to be dog bowl. But if I spelled bowl wrong, I typed it B-W-O-L instead of B-O-W-L, it wouldn't catch it. And then so people started putting misspellings. Mm -hmm. And then Amazon switched to a, uh, upgraded to more a sentence, what sentence uh, uh, search. So where it would catch those misspellings. Because I miss, remember, you know, Helium 10 had it back in the day, a, was it called misspellinator? Or mis yeah, yeah misspell. And they, they took it away when Amazon changed the algorithm. But you needed to do that. And now, and then the algorithm changed to know like, okay, Empire State Building and tall office building are the same thing. You know, it's a, it's a sentiment. Uh, it's a sent, sent, what I can never say the damn word, but it, it knew that that or sneakers and <clears throat> sneakers and uh, running shoes are the same kind of the same thing. That's the second level where it's at now. But the next level is where they're going to take a single sentence or your picture and know everything they need to know <clears throat> based on past search and their huge library of billions of searches and know exactly what to serve you up on. So you're not going to need to put all these keywords like, you know, data dive where you, you go and you, you find the keywords everybody else is missing. And you put them in your listing and it's a great tool. Um, but I don't know if it's going to be relevant in a year or yeah. two, uh, unless he makes some changes. I, I don't know where Amazon's going. The one thing I do think that'll delay this or may postpone it is advertising. And Amazon is not going to sacrifice the 40 plus billion they're going to make this year uh, in pure profit off of selling ads. So if this affects ad revenue uh, in a, a negative way, I don't think they'll, they'll be slow to make any kind of changes, but if they figure out how to make sure this doesn't affect ad, ad revenue and it actually could increase it, I think it could get to the point where you're not even having to do all these ad campaigns. Um, you're just going to say my budget's a thousand bucks, go spend it. Uh, and it's going to optimize it. And know exactly what to serve it up for. I'm thousands, thousand bucks. I'm willing to pay this much per click, yeah. and it'll it'll automatically do it. You're not going to have to game it, um, like like you are now. Uh, so I think there's some big changes coming around what we do, and and even product development. We, you know, Amy Weiss has talked about this. Some others using AI for testing out products in combination with like PickFu and stuff. There's there's just so much going right now. That's it's gonna be it's a it's a fascinating time that we're living in. Yeah, I, I can't agree more. And I'm not worried about it because we'll evolve as it evolves. Yeah, now, it's the same thing as when we went from horse and buggy to the car or when we went from and you know it's a it's a it's gonna be an evolution. Some people are gonna lose their jobs, some people are gonna have to adapt, but we'll evolve to it. I mean, how you and I go back to remember when there wasn't weren't cell phones. Um, you know, your your son Kelsey probably is Rick, like, I go back to where there were no phones. You know, you know, yeah, <laughs> it's, Pay phone, yeah, no phone, yeah, yeah. When you had to go, and the, the woman had to put the wire in to connect you to your dad. Yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> um, it's yeah, it's uh, but now we just take everything for granted. So it's the same thing that's going to happen here. Yeah, and there's still a lot of people. I saw some studies. Only like twenty percent of the population has even dabbled or even knows about AI. You know, they people a lot of eighty percent hear about it and um, that they don't know nothing about it. Only a small yep. percentage have even messed with it. And most of those have only just superficially played with it. And there's only a, it's one or 2% of the population that actually has a clue what's going on right now. It's uh, it, it went on a bit of a decline. So you know how there was a surge. Yeah. So I guess everybody's gone on and tried writing poems with it and said, Oh, what else do we do? And it, it, it came down a bit over the last month or two. Yeah. It's, it's uh, open AI. Or Chat GPT, the big one, yeah, it's it's gone. You know, usage has gone down. Uh, yeah. They were the fastest to get to 100 million users, and now it, it's tapered off. And that's because exactly a lot of people got caught up in the hype, and they're like, "Well, I don't know how to use this," or "It didn't do a good job for me." That's because you suck at writing prompts, or you don't know understand it. But um, that'll that'll change over time. It's going to become much more weaved into everybody's life. Yeah, and they may not need to know the technical side. It's going to be just in. You know, like Siri is in a way is AI. You know, you, 
they'll use it in a more of a more humane way and not really understand the technical back end of it. I don't know about you, Kev, but uh, in in Texas right now, I don't know how hot it is, but it's pretty chilly up here. And I just wanted to let you know that I I have my favorite Winnie the Pooh blanket uh, covering my feet. <laughs> It's like 90 something degrees here in Austin right now. Oh, it's you were just here. Was it last week? You were in Austin? Yeah. Well, I, was, when... I wasn't here. Uh, so we missed each other. I was gone, but you, you were here. Yep. Terry Blacks. Yeah. Yeah. Got my fill. Okay. So let's talk about one last thing and then we'll hit any questions if there are any. Uh, and if you do have any questions about newsletters, AI, or this next topic, um, just throw it in the comments section. And this is something uh, I heard about just very briefly in passing. I don't know where. And then you put it into your newsletter and it was Levanta. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. Not very many people know about Levanta and the service. So yeah, you want to. Yeah, they, they spun out of uh, the, their backgrounds, the affiliate marketing world. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one of the companies that uh, actually that, assembly the company that bought helium 10 actually bought one of the one of the companies um that was the precursor to levanta um as affiliate marketing uh company reversion was the name of them right yeah and, 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 right. They, and then they they kind of sunsetted that a little bit and some of those guys went off and started levanta so they have a background in, in the affiliate world and there's a couple other people doing this same thing right now i just met a guy in uh, accelerate last week that's um doing the same thing as a couple more, but one of the things that Le like Levanta uh, Maverick X, I think, and some others, but one of the things I like about Levanta is they have over a thousand, it's basically a dashboard. And so you connect your seller central account and it imports all your products. And then you go through and you say, which ones do you want to promote? You kind of flag them, uh, checkbox them. Mm -hmm. And you say, what kind of disc, what kind of affiliate commission are you willing to pay to somebody to promote this product? And then the, on the other side, Levanta has, influencers that are in their database that will then go and look for offers so it's kind of like a, a, a matching service uh and they also have lots of uh these blogs you know 10 best uh, new blenders of 2023 and wire cutter uh is one that's, that's yeah. a hard hard one to get in but that's a big one it's owned by the new york times and usa today and several of these other big ones and so they will you can submit up to i think it's 50 per day you can go out and reach out to these people and submit to them and say hey i'd love like to offer you guys to promote my blender, I'll give you a 20% discount. So then they automate the whole process behind the scenes of tying that into your brand attribution. So that link that gets you that 10% back. So if you offer a 20% discount on your blender for USA Today to put it in their top 10 blend Christmas gifts of 2023, uh, then you get that 10% attribution bonus back. You're giving them a 20% commission. Levanta charges a three and a half to 5% fee, depending on your level. So in the end of the day, you're 13 to 15 percent a cost on, on a sale um, once you get that 10 percent back uh, in this example. So that that's really good. It's all, the whole process is automated um, and all in one dashboard. So I think it's it's a really cool concept and a really cool thing that they're doing. And they they said uh, the last Prime Day they had a clients doing over a million bucks just through links and stuff for Prime Day. So I think this fourth quarter. If you can get in that, people, you know, we've talked about Harrow in the past, help a reporter out. Yep, yep. People will post on there and they'll say, hey, I'm writing a story for Cosmopolitan magazine. You know, I need to know the five best beauty. I'm looking for beauty products to feature in our holiday gift guide. And you respond back and like, oh, mine, 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 you know, and, and they'll pick some of those and feature them for free. I did this year, a few years ago and you know, I got on TV, not Good Morning America, but several morning TV shows like Pittsburgh and a bunch of others and made some extra sales. And I got in a bunch of stuff, but they're kind of automating that whole process, uh, which I think is, is really cool. And so this fourth quarter, you know, there's, there's a run up. You can't wait till end of October and do this. It's, you're almost out of time now right? Uh, to get, to get going on, on this uh, and, and try to capture some, some sales. Um, and, you know, and they got TikTok influencers and, you know, TikTok, that's a whole nother topic. You know, TikTok is going to be, People say right now, where are the three places that you should be focusing on uh, or where are the places you should be focusing on, on as an e-commerce seller? And I, say, I still say Amazon's number one. It's always going to be number one for the foreseeable future. But then you're looking at Walmart and then TikTok. TikTok shop, I think, is going to explode. 
this is not going to be another wish.com or another Timu or something like that. This, mm-hmm. I think they have the ingredients and the power uh, to actually do something right. Like I right after this call, I have a call with their, their head of business development for all of North America uh, <clears throat> wants to, wants to chat with me. And so and I think, and they're making a huge push you know, for the holidays. If you sign up in their store, they're giving a, uh, up to 50% discounts and they're underwriting that. So if you're selling your product for 20 bucks and you give a 50% discount, you're not eating that $10. They're going to pay you back the 10 bucks. It's a promotional expense for them to just get this thing going. Mm -hmm. I think they're, they're striving to hit $20 billion in sales this fourth quarter. I think they're going to, they're going to be a player and setting up their own fulfillment. Once they have TikTok pay, they know what you've been looking at. TikTok is the number one new product discovery platform right now. I think that's, could be major. Is it going to unseat Amazon? No, I don't think it'll ever unseat Amazon, but is it going to make a big run and maybe unseat walmart.com as another channel? I think it's possible. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see what happens. You know, I know someone in the helium 10 elite, she sells 6 million a year on Amazon. She started in TikTok earlier this spring and the first six months she was on TikTok, she'd done 2 million bucks and she could have done more, but TikTok put limits on it because it was in testing. So she could only have, I think it was 200 orders per day or some limit. It's a fraud prevention kind of yeah. thing. And so she was hitting the $200 a day for sales by like 10 a.m. and have wow. to wait till the next day. Uh, so she could have done way more than that. I don't know if that limit is still there. This was a, a month or two ago. She told us about this. She's actually talking about it at the next Helium 10 elite in-person event in October. Um, um, but <clears throat> yeah, it's it's uh, fascinating what's happening there. And so Levanta can help you tie into this whole ecosystem, uh, especially when it comes to Amazon. They're specialized in Amazon, driving traffic to Amazon, helping Amazon sellers get that outside traffic. So I think it's a, if you haven't looked into it, you should look into it. Right. Okay. So let's see. We got a bunch of questions. We want to start with that, Kels. Yes. Yeah. So let's get into the questions. Uh, The first is a comment from Artie. Uh, scary part is that Amazon is using AI to evaluate your products and decide if people like it or not. Uh, have you heard of this at all? Yeah, that they're doing some of that. I think they'll refine this and they have the data. Um, and I think, you know, it's, they may miss out on some cases, but I think it's going to get fine tuned enough to where they're going to be really good at doing this. I don't trust Amazon on a lot of things on creating a, you know, a, new listing like now right now using ai to create your your listing or i don't trust them when they say you need to ship in this many products you know this is your forecast because they don't know what you're doing marketing wise they don't have any idea so there's some aspects of what amazon suggests that i i think is hogwash uh but when it comes to the actual true data of knowing what customers want what they click on i think they're pretty damn good at it Uh, so i think uh it may be a little messy at first um, but i think it's going to get fine-tuned to where it's really good Okay. All right. So, uh, hey guys, uh, do you guys have any references for registering trademarks in Canada and the U.S.? I am from the U.K. Yeah, you can do it yourself, but I recommend you uh, call Rich Goldstein. Um, it's Rich R I C H. It's Goldstein Patent Law. G O L D S T E I N. G O L D S T E I N. Patent. P A T E N D T. Law, or as you say in uh, the U.K., well, y'all say it differently. Y'all say well, how you, y'all say it, you don't say patent, you say some, some different way of saying it, but the same thing. He, you know, it, that's not as cheap as doing it yourself, but it's going to be done freaking right. Uh, and so that's what that's who I would contact. There are agencies and people that will do it for you, you do have to do them separately, um, but that's who I would contact. Okay, uh, next one is from Chuck. Uh, what is the difference between a newsletter and a blog? A huge difference. A blog, people have to go to. A blog, a uh, newsletter, you go to them. So how many times that you bookmark it? You, you have your favorite blog and you bookmark it uh, maybe. And is it part of your morning ritual when you're drinking your coffee to go scroll through all those blogs? Probably not. Uh, but when you get a newsletter to your inbox, you either got to delete it, open it, or read it. Uh, and it, it's right. It's, it's, it's push instead of pull technology. Blogs pull, newsletters push. And so it's a huge, huge, huge difference. Now, some people will use their newsletter and link out to a longer story on a blog, and that's, that's okay. You want newsletters to be a sh- quick read, three to five minutes tops. They should be skimmable, formatted in a way that's what well, – there's a lot of science to doing a newsletter besides just having cool content. 
It's the formatting. It's no paragraphs more than two or three sentences. Uh, no big blocks, long blocks of text. Um, short to the point. Provide value in what you're saying, not just, hey, in our blog today, we talk about how to launch on Amazon. Read the blog here. That's a piece of shit newsletter. There's a lot of them in our space. But that blog should say, did you know that you can launch a, I don't know, should have some sort of uh, information in that uh, and then say, read the whole details here. Uh, you know, it's like if I was doing something on TikTok, it might be TikTok is giving up to 50% discounts for uh, sellers or, or supplement or funding up to 50% discounts for sellers. And they plan to do $20 billion a year, learn how to get involved by reading the blog. You could do something like that. Um, uh, but, and then blogs can be used for SEO. So as a newsletter or as a long post, you know, if you do those right and run those through some SEO tools, then if people are just on Google or Bing and they're searching for how to launch your product on, how, on TikTok or whatever, um, they might find your blog and then get, get them into your newsletter. Also with a, a blog, you don't own the customer. Uh, you don't own maybe you, the pixel. You only own the pixel that you're pixeling them with. Uh, with a newsletter, you own the customer. I mean, you own their at least their email address. Hopefully, hopefully more than that, but at least their email address. You know who they are. So three years from now, someone that's read three of your newsletters, you could go back to them and say, "Hey, we got a new thing." Someone that's read your blog three times, you have no clue who they are, right. other than a pixel that may be in a Facebook audience that you don't control, and you could easily lose. Great answer. Huge, huge difference. Yep. All right. And are you able to uh, say how many subscribers you have for your newsletter? Right now I have five, uh, a little over 5,000 uh, on the BillionDollarSellers.com newsletter. Um, I Some people, when they create a newsletter, like I said, the example to Perry earlier, he's just sending it to everybody on his list. My trainer, he had a list of like 700 people that have you know contacted him or done different things over the last years. He just sent his whole newsletter to that list. I don't do that. To me, that's a, a marketing promotion. I, I send out everybody on my list. My list is pretty big. And I said, do you want the newsletter or not? Sign up for it. And then you have to double opt in. You don't just sign up. You have to actually confirm. So I lose some people in that process. But I want people that actually want it, that actually yeah. want to read it, that are want it. So it's a quality audience. So that's good for me for selling things. That's good for the algorithm. So if, if there's a lot of riffraff on your newsletter, you're sending out just to your whole list of customers, or everybody that's registered for your warranty. The open rates are lower. Some may report as spam. It's going to affect everything else. So you may not be delivered to a lot of people and you may be shooting yourself in the foot. So I, that's why I'm doing it that way. So there's a lot of people, they have a preconceived notion about newsletters. When you say sign up for my newsletter, like they roll their eyes. They're like, Oh yeah, I already get like 16 emails a day from all, and all these others. Jungle Scout has a newsletter. Data Dive has a newsletter. Helium 10 has one. I get the There's a million them. of them. There's a million of them. And like, I don't read them all. They're just a bunch of crap. So that's the first reaction. And so people just say, nah, I don't need another email. But what's happening, what I'm noticing with mine is once they're in it and they actually start reading it, they're like, uh, no, I actually want this. Um, and that's what you need to create. Uh, and that's the hard part uh, is, is doing that. And it takes the ability to curate, the ability to write, the ability to really know your audience and know your avatar, whether you're doing Amazon or dogs or whatever it may be. And that, that's the challenge that a lot of people are going to fail at. And you're not going to please everybody. No, you can't. And mine is deliberately edgy on purpose. Sometimes I'll put a little jokes in there. I'll put a picture. You know, one of my subject lines was naked girl on the balcony. And uh, people, I had a couple of people. I had one guy message me back and say, take me off of this garbage right now. I'm like, great. See you. Bye. Later. Yeah. Um, but I had hundreds of people. Literally, this is awesome. This is so cool. This is refreshing. It's not corporate. Uh, and I had another person, um, and you might know who they are and they're in the corporate world, one of these big corporations. She replied back. She said, seriously, that was, that was the subject line. And I wrote her back. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's all I said. Um, <laughs> and she unsubscribed and good. You gotta, you, if you try to please everybody, you please nobody. So you got to find your audience and know your audience. And I know my audience. And so when I get those emails of people that want off, you know, it's not, it's not everybody. You don't want to like offend everybody, but if it's one or two people that think it's garbage and everybody else is loving it to death, then I'm doing something right. Yep. All right. Okay. We got one last comment uh, from Neil. I want to try Leventa, but I'm worried about stocking out. Stocking out is terrible. 
if the product takes off due to influencers, uh, it takes over 100 days to manufacture and ship our inventory into Amazon. Um, any comments about this? Yeah, that that's a problem. I mean, you could start off with just one product and just don't go after one of these big, you know, big sites with a lot of traffic and just see if it works. For, I don't know if Lomato, you, you pay a monthly fee. I think they charge a monthly fee. So you have to pay that fee, but you could start off small. You don't have to just blow it out of the water um, uh, initially. Um, yeah, you could, could you could pick one and see how it goes and then pick another, right? Yeah, you could you could try it on a small level. Uh, you know, it might cost you a little bit more because I think they do have a monthly fee of some sort, I think, um, like 100 bucks. I don't know what it is. Um, there's, there's a monthly like just software access maintenance fee, but you could try it on a small level. And if it, if it starts doing really well, then stop it. And then now, you yeah. know, Holy cow, this worked. So then go back on your next order and order more, be prepared for it. You'll know kind of what to expect, or maybe you try it and it's just crickets and the sound of silence for you. You're like, Oh, that didn't work. Yeah. I know when um, I I've told you about this story when we were working with the pillow company and we would be looking at a monthly, all of a sudden our monthly sales would go up a hundred grand and it mm -hmm. was three times a year. And all of a sudden, like we were trying to figure out what it was, what it was. And this is before you had to enter your product to wire cutter, 100 grand a month from wire cutter or when they promoted it, we had no idea, no clue when they were promoting it and boom, it, it, the sales would be there. It was crazy, but uh, that's the type of, effect you can have now this is a big company that you know we were managing the brand for but um just that's just to let you know that it, yeah if it takes off it could it could be nice now wire cutter has a whole different structure now so you know you apply um they've just signed up uh i was talking to levanta the, this morning and they a wire cutter just signed up so now you can sign up and become part of wire cutter or at least apply to be uh, on the wire cutter site. So anyways, I just said it, Kev. Yep. Was that one time or two <laughs> times? Uh, uh, I don't know. Kelsey's been keeping track back there. We had a, we had a side bet going on. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> How many times, Kels? <laughs> I don't know. He just... <laughs> we actually, uh, Hayden made this little sound bite too. Anytime you say it. Anyway, anyway, anyway. <laughs> That's great. Anyway, anyway, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm not gonna say that word <laughs> but are there any other questions or is that it uh we have let me see a comment from amz elites uh we had oh. the same with german influencer she posted about our mushroom complex uh 50k in one weekend mm -hmm. yeah so. Let me ask you, did you do something for that influencer? Even though they might not have been officially promoting you, did you go back and thank them and actually send them like a gift package? Or and I, I know someone that's done this in, in podcasting. They, they would get on a lot of podcasts and then they would allow the podcast host to allow them to promote something. Like, oh, so how do people find your product or how to get in touch with you? And they'd give the URL or whatever. And then anybody that signed up, she would keep track of it. And then a month later or two months later, she would send the podcaster uh, a check or a wire or whatever for three or 400, 500 bucks and say, thank you so much. It's totally unexpected from the, the podcaster, but what it, they're like, holy cow, I know that was really cool of her. You want to come back on the podcast again? Um, and if you do something like that in that mushroom case, um, you may, uh, may turn that 50K into 500K. Yeah. When, when I was at M3 last weekend or last week, uh, this lady just talking about mushrooms had this, uh, mushroom spray. It was like, and don't start thinking about magic mushrooms, but, uh, it was a spray and it was a three second energy boost. And I said, yeah, right. And I'm telling you, it was like that energy five or, or uh, five hour energy, but it was instant. The second you put it into your mouth, the, uh, and it was two squirts, you'd feel energy and it would last for eight hours and you could still go to sleep. So if you had, let's say an hour's worth of studying, 
um, you could go to sleep after it. It didn't dictate whether you were up or not. It was, it really was magical without the hallucinations. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, anyway, I, well, I caught myself. Yeah, you did. Good job. Anyway, so anyway. every time um, you do that, you get two taken away. So. Yeah, okay, okay. But it was it was one of these products that's awesome. And and I really hope she has some great success on Amazon, but it's gonna be tough for her to get that product out there. One of the best products I've ever seen. Yeah, that's sometimes it's hard to do demonstrable stuff or to crack on Amazon, but that's where TikTok comes in. Yeah, I'm spraying that's your cigars you... down with it, by the way. Next right. time we meet. All right. So we'll yeah. be up all night smoking. We... It's not like when we get together, we're not up all night smoking. I'll, I'll have four cigars and you'll still be on your first. Oh. I've always smoked. <laughs> but you'll be on the second Coke Zero and I'll still be on the first. Exactly. <laughs> I think. I think that's it. I don't think there's any other questions. Uh, the prize today is Kelsey. Uh, we're giving away one hour of Kelsey's time. You could talk about anything with him, uh, but primarily influencer marketing or uh, his social media and how he does that. Uh, if you're interested in that. Oh, and we also have a, a press release that we'll give away as well. If you're interested, this is your last chance. You got about 30 seconds. Hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. Tag two people. You get a second entry. And let's get to a sponsor. This episode of Lunch with Norm is sponsored by Rebate. Attention sellers and brand owners want to reach more shoppers and boost sales? Rebate's platform connects sellers with shoppers seeking great deals on new products. They make it easy to offer promotions, handle rebates, and ensure seamless redemptions. With countless reviews from satisfied customers, Rebate is the go-to solution to increase your sales. Visit Rebate.com today and start reaching more shoppers. Now let's get back to the show. Okay, we're back. I see there's one more entry, Kels. Just came in. All right, I'll, I'll make sure to add them. And uh, yeah, let's head over to the wheel. It's time for the Wheel of Elves. All right, I'm going to share my screen. All right, so if you are the winner of today's Wheel of Kelsey, make sure you email me, k at lunchwithnorm.com. We have a ton of entries today. And uh, don't forget to sign up for our 500th episode. Uh, it's up to, it's over 25K worth of prizes for one single person. So you got it. Oh, wow. That Michael. was so close. All right, Michael V, I believe. This is Michael V. Uh, congratulations. And uh, yeah, please email me, k at lunchwithnorm.com. And uh, looking forward to your consultation. Yeah. And Kevin, in case you don't know, AMZ Elite is Tom from the group. AMZ Elite is is oh. Tom from uh, from BDSS. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Awesome. Okay. So I think that's it. Anything else, Kev? We haven't talked about your BDSS uh, event in Hawaii. Um, if uh, people want to sign up, I think Kelsey put the link in. We'll put it in definitely. But uh, you want to tell us a little bit about that? um sure that's uh next may uh well there's a virtual one in february february 21st and 22nd for people that don't want to travel or don't want to spend the uh, the money it's a it's a cheaper one uh i've got some really cool speakers i'll be announcing soon on that it's a really good lineup uh the speakers for hawaii are all set except for whoever wins the virtual one gets an automatic ticket um that one is may 18th to 23rd on the island of Kauai, hawaii at the hyatt regency beautiful hotel there we're doing some really, really cool stuff around it. Got some great speakers. Um, we're doing a, a amazing race, TV show style road race one day at 25 Avis rental cars. Going to be um, randomly put into teams and going to get to see the whole island. And as, as you know, you've been there. You know that that's a very diverse island from deserts and Grand Canyons on one side to 10,000 foot waterfalls on the other side. So we're doing some really cool stuff around that. <clears throat> it's not a cheap event to come to, uh, but it's high, high level. About 120 to 150 people will be there. But the average seller, our last time was the median of their sales was thirteen and a half million. So it's uh, if you want, and, and the beautiful thing about it is, it's not just show up at an event; it's the community around it. And so, as we were talking earlier, there's a WhatsApp group for people that have been to the last two. I didn't start this for the beginning ones, but 
that WhatsApp group is extremely active still yeah. right now. And, you know, the last one was in Puerto Rico in June. So three and a half months later, <laughs> that group every day, there's sometimes 40, 50 posts in there, sometimes five or 10, but of cool stuff being shared. And it's a great resource for, hey, I got this problem. Anybody know how to contact this? It's very, very valuable. So it goes beyond just coming to an event and listening to some presentations, which are all are good because I I put a cash prize on the presentation. So the, whoever gets voted by the audience as the best speaker, it's $5,000 cash. And I publish the list of the top 10. And so everybody wants to be in that top 10. Nobody wants to be embarrassed and not be in the top 10. Uh, so everybody's bringing out their A game and trying to bring the best stuff. So they're sharing things they don't share elsewhere. Uh, and the speaker lineup, uh, the, I've got eight women speaking uh, in Puerto Rico. I'm sorry, in Hawaii. Uh, out of the 13 speakers, there's eight of the, some of the smartest women in this space uh, that are speaking, including, you know, one a lot of people are looking for is the president of PacView um, is speaking. She's one of the probably, she's hard to get to speak, but she like knows stuff on PPC. And so she's like, what do you want? She, I, I just saw her in Seattle. She's like, what should I speak on? I said, it's up to you. And she's like, just make it cool and something different. Not, you know, here's how to do AI on your PPC or something. And she's like, what if I talk about what the Chinese are doing on PPC that nobody's doing in the United States and how they're crushing it? Uh, it's like, that would be great. That would be brilliant. Uh, that's the kind of stuff you'll learn um, that you're not going to learn elsewhere. So okay. that's uh, yeah, it's, it's a, uh, you've been to them, Norm, Kelsey, you've been to what uh, one or two now? Uh, one. One. Oh yeah. You went to Puerto Rico. That's right. Puerto Rico. Uh, I know you're banned from coming to Hawaii. Your dad said he's got to rotate it through the other sons. Right? They give everybody a chance. Yep. Uh, but I'm sorry about that, man. Maybe you can come to Iceland next year. Uh, first time here. So uh, <laughs> play some brothers, I think. Oh, <laughs> uh, now Kelsey will put that information up. Also, I think it's important to say uh, hotel rooms. So they're not included. You have to buy them. And if you don't buy them early, the prices of the hotel rooms are going to go up. Yeah, the the hotel right now, um, we we have a room block and we negotiate the hotel. If you go on like Expedia, it's eight hundred dollars a night, roughly, yeah. right? eight hundred U.S. dollars, not Canadian dollars, eight hundred U.S. dollars a night. Let me clarify that. Uh, and the rates will probably, as it gets closer, go to fourteen to fifteen hundred dollars per night. We have a rate of three seventy nine. Well, with the resort fee, it's four twenty four, so four hundred twenty four dollars a night. And I just got a report from them actually they gave me access to this back end uh, uh friday i think it, or monday um of this week and i saw there's only 14 rooms left um under our room rate because a lot of people already bought tickets and reserved yeah. so the people that wait there's always people that wait they got to see their schedule but the people that wait uh you're going to be staying in some crappy airbnb somewhere five miles ten miles away or they're going to be paying through the nose or they're going to be begging someone else that they're going to be saying, Norm, can I sleep on your floor? Um, it, <laughs> like Kelsey. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so it, it's a, uh, uh, yeah. If you, if you think you can swing it, don't wait. If you, if there's something, something comes up uh, and you can't make it, I roll the ticket. The tickets are non-refundable, but I roll it to the next event. So that always happens. There's people that something, some conflict, somebody's getting gradu graduating from high school or, some sickness or whatever, you don't lose it. It just gets rolled to the next event. All right. Okay. So thank you, sir. We, we covered a lot of territory today. Newsletters, AI, Levante, a little bit of everything. Uh, but thank you for coming on. Yep. It's always good to come on and, uh, and shoot the bird with you guys. Yeah, shooting the bird. I've never heard that expression. <laughs> I didn't want to thing. shoot the shit. Sh yeah, oh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, All right, so. There's children listening. Someone's driving in their car right now, and there's children listening. Yeah, exactly. All right, and I always enjoy um, uh, shooting the bird with you, too. <laughs> <laughs> want more great information? Don't forget to subscribe by clicking here. Also, if you want to check out our latest podcast, click over here. Lunch with the lunch with the lunch.